PM board bombs. Welcome back to EM board bombs. Board bombs. Board bombs. <laughs> hey, it's me. It's me, Hussein. Hey, I'm you're back. back. You're back. How was your trip to Papua New Guinea? Uh, Papua New Guinea was yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, the Papa is still in the New Guinea. That's very clever. So it was uh, that's very clever. Yeah. We all know you didn't go there now when you made that joke. <laughs> There's a reference there. There's a reference why I, I mentioned know. Papua Atlanta, New Guinea. Atlanta and uh, Dallas were fun. I had a fun time. A lot there. of similarities. A lot of, yeah. You know, I don't know if people know this, but I think I'll, I'll give a shout out to my brother. And I know I've met some of his residents at Emory. Uh, my brother's a, a EM doc as well. He's a faculty at Emory. Shout out, Irfan. Um, and, and shout out to some of his residents who I've met before at SAEM. Uh, but yeah, it is some of the stories he tells me at Grady. Oh yeah, time. that's crazy. Yeah, it's it, yeah. it's just it's amazing like the diversity of like EM practices, you know, like how you practice and things, mm-hmm. and it's always fun like comparing notes uh, with him, comparing cases. So it's it's really cool, and they you know mad respect to the program down there. They do just amazing work down there in ATL. Um, but ATL, it's, look uh, at you with the it, slang. I know, I know. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. We did some fun things. How you been, Briggs? Good, good. Nothing new here. Yeah. I got so many stats today for today's podcast. Oh, I, we're excited. Oh my gosh. I've been oh, watching Survivor shows just to get ready for this podcast. Episode. Just to get ready for this. We're yeah. going to be dispelling some myths. Yes. I think that's the other thing. Yes. There, there are a couple of key myths that we're going to be dispelling that might get perpetuated in movies and mm-hmm. other things mm-hmm. uh, because they're cool. But that's what a lot of this podcast is going to be. Uh, so, you know what? Let's get into it. Let's thank our sponsor. Uh, can we do that later? Can we do that later? No, we have that's to tell them now. We have everybody's attention. Oh, uh, fine. All right. Hey, you guys know this. The only sponsor the that only EM Board one. Bombs takes. Emergency Medicine News. EM News. Exactly right. EM News. Exactly right. We love them. They're awesome. Go read their articles. It's all free. They're <laughs> go pick awesome. up a paper. Go read. <laughs> go pick up a paper. <laughs> They're also electronic. Go, just go read digital. it. Yeah. Go pick up and a computer. If you want to read the if you want to read the controversial <laughs> topics, that's all Dr. Briggs. Right there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. There's far more controversial articles in there than mine. <laughs> I don't know, man. People people tell me, they're like, did you read Briggs' latest article on what to do with a, this type of arrhythmia? It's quite controversial. No, that was a good okay. one. Okay. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a fantastic one. That was hey, your recommendation, hey, by the way. Thank you. No, you're welcome. And hey, I appreciate the shout out mm-hmm. you know, and, and the, those kind words. you know. Yes. Hey, oh, and um, remind me to tell you a story at the end of this podcast. Okay. Um, just remind me, don't let me forget okay. at the end of the podcast, people still want to listen. I have an still want to listen. Story to the after show. Right. <laughs> the after show. All right, let's after it. the Reddit <laughs> corner. Hey, a 23 year old male presents to the emergency department approximately one hour after being bitten on his lower leg by a snake while hiking in the desert regions of Arizona. So he describes the snake as having a patterned body and. A rattling tail. <laughs> you ask him if he's completely sure about this. Uh, he states, yes, and I can show you the video. Uh, so he shows you a video, and unfortunately, instead of allowing the snake to mind its own business, the patient had a stick and appeared to be taunting the snake, yelling out, come on now, I need you out here so I can put you on my social, end quote. <laughs> The patient was able to successfully make a TikTok video of the snake with the video showing the snake lunging at the patient's leg and firmly biting on his lower leg. The patient can be heard screaming in agony and pain. You're about to ask the patient if it was worth it, uh, but you hold your tongue because you're pretty sure they'll say yes as their views continue to increase on their video. (laughs) <laughs> hey, so on exam, the patient's vital signs are within normal limits, but the bite shows two puncture wounds with significant surrounding erythema and diffuse leg swelling. He is unfortunately experiencing severe pain that's getting worse and mild paresthesia around the area of the bite. Dr. Briggs, what's the most appropriate or, or really the next step here in the management of this patient flashback to oral wars 
Let's do it. Let's go. Is it A, administer a broad spectrum antibiotic and observe? Is it B, cut and suck on the venom and suck it out of the wound? Hmm. Is it C, administer anti-venom specific to this envenom nation? Is it D, apply a tourniquet above the bite site to limit venom spread? Or is it E, observe the patient and take measurements of the swelling at periodic intervals to see if it is worsening? Dr. Briggs, what's the correct answer here? Correct answer is going to be choice C, administer antivenom mm. specific to the rattlesnake envenomation. 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 Hey, can we, yeah. so let's just talk real quick about some of the other answer choices. I think it's kind of important. Before you do that, you should talk about um, EM rapid bombs. Oh, yeah. EM rapid bombs. Uh, we've seen uh, an uptick mm -hmm. in folks uh, subscribing. Looks like starting uh, off four intern times year. starting to get <laughs> close. Oh, that too. <laughs> people about to start uh, working. So I think uh, people are like, ah, I need to I, I need Ramp a it freshen up. up a little bit here. Yeah. Let's go. So yeah, so EM uh, rapid bombs. Uh, you can find it on uh, emboardbombs.com. You can click to subscribe or you can just go to emrapidbombs.supercast.com. And right there, you can sign up for a trial version. Uh, see if you like it, or you can just go ahead and sign up for the whole podcast. You get more than, man, we're going to be hitting 400 episodes soon, which is pretty cool. No, 500. Um, question. Oh my gosh, you're right. I'm you get us 100 track. episodes. Uh, my 500 gosh, episodes. that is that's amazing. It's, yeah. I, I can't believe that. I and mean, we started out with like 100. Half, a, yeah, th half um, a thousand, that's what we'll be at half a thousand yeah. i mean you can pretty much use that for just like studying for boards alone i feel uh, which is really sure. awesome it's the only uh, emerging medicine uh board review podcast every episode is anywhere from like three to seven minutes long um you get great explanations kind of coaching segments and summaries we talk about how you'll be asked questions on the boards uh, what's really cool though is that a large segment of our listeners are actually uh, seasoned attendings yeah. uh, we love getting those emailed emails from seasoned attendings uh, saying how, uh, you know, they just like to listen uh, to stay fresh on content. Uh, and one of those people that likes to stay uh, fresh on content and listens to our old episodes is myself because there are yes. episodes, we've done so many Same. where, you know, I look back like two, three years, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I forgot that pearl and it's great to yeah. refresh it. Absolutely yeah. it is. Absolutely it is. Hey, Briggs. So before we do that too, I would like to say I, I did just finish an overnight shift. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're gonna have to carry me a little bit. So I'm going to be just kind of, you know, I'm ready. just reaching on your back here. I'm All ready. right. You got me. I'm ready. All right. Let's Flashback go. A few hey, years ago. It, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. All right. So, um, question choice A, administer broad spectrum antibiotic and observe. So while broad spectrum antibiotics, they can be used again in like secondary infection, that's not going to be the initial treatment for snake bites. Antibiotics aren't going to really do anything here. No uh, Let's talk about one of the myths though. B, cut and suck the venom out of the wound. What? Can you talk about that? Can yeah, it does that? not get broken down by the GI tract. No. <laughs> this method is no. outdated. It's obviously outdated. It's ineffective. No one should do that anymore. It causes additional Stop. trauma to the tissue, increases the risk of infection, <laughs> and does not actually remove venom from the wound. <laughs> So don't I do know. that. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, you know, you'd see like all those videos and stuff and they'd like make an X mark and stuff and they're like sucking them out. It's, it's like, weird. what is going on? Vampire and stuff. And then this goes into choice D, yeah. right? So apply a tourniquet oh, yeah. above the bite site to limit venom spread. Can you talk about why this is actually terrible? It's like something like a zombie movie or something. Right, Yeah. right. This method is obviously contraindicated. Besides the obvious fact that it can not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Concentrates the venom in that area and has a higher risk of compartment syndrome potentially. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't do Just that. Don't do it. Don't do uh, that. The choice, answer choice yeah, here. Yeah, choice E was yeah. easy. It was talking about observation. Yeah. Now that's the vast yeah. majority of snake bites yeah. actually don't need antivenom, yeah. but in right. this case, this patient has some significant symptoms and signs. The big things in this question that stood yeah. out are the fact that it's, it, the patient's experiencing severe pain. And then some also right. having now some paresthesias around the area of the bite too. Uh, so those two things are concerning with the uh, diffuse leg swelling. So the, the inflammation is spread from that area. Now we'll, we'll get into 
more specific ways, especially on the test to tell when to give antivenom yeah. or how about this? If you're in the community and you don't have antivenom at your shop, uh, it's very expensive by the way, antivenom, uh, you may have to consider transferring, but in some cases you could opt for maybe OBS and then transfer it gets worse, whatever. It's all this kind of details of, of risks and benefits of OBS in some patients versus others. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that here. First, we got to talk about snakes. This is my most exciting part of the podcast. I'm not one of those like snake weirdos that like there's some people out there that are, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? But I'm, but I'm, a, but I'm definitely you're, no, no, you're no, no, no. saying you're not. I'm not, but I'm definitely an outdoor weirdo. You know that. Can I just tell? Yeah. I mean, can I just tell folks like I was the trying snake to do story? an on like mastitis oh. and you were like, snakes, yeah, I, snakes, we got to do snakes. Well, it's we okay. Snakes. Okay. I think the audience can agree that snake bites are infinitely more interesting than Mastitis. I mean, I'll, okay, all right, fine, fine. All You're right, like, have fine. we done mastitis yet? I'm like, no, and I yeah. don't want to. Let's do snake bites. <laughs> That'll be for next week. Yeah. Um. I so I do want to tell people how we're going to break this down. Okay. So snake bites, they're definitely very testable. It's on ABM's model. You're going to be tested on it. You need to know how to manage it. We're going to try to break it down into a form that's easy to remember yeah. and really give you like key pearls. It's important to note that we're going to be talking about one specific yes. family the most common here. One in the United States. Exactly. Yeah. It's the most common one, but we're also going to make a question on one of the uh, lesser common ones you still need to know about. Yeah. So this is not going to cover like all of them. We, uh, we're going to focus on a couple of key ones here. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll also add on the funny uh, snake story about how we almost oh, uh, died on one of our trips oh my God. Uh, from snake. We'll add that on at the end. Yeah. We'll add that on at the end to the other story. Continue. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What's funny is that all the Australians listening to this are really bored already because this is like something they have to deal with every day. Yeah, they're like learn about it like in grade like, school like when they're born. They're like, right. this is how you wrestle a snake. It's <laughs> terrible. We actually have like a pretty big readership in Australia. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying like if you go to like Australian EM websites, half their websites dedicated to just snake and animations. I know. I know. They don't exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the United States, we have rattlesnakes. <laughs> There's like 10 different snake types. I can kill you there. Okay, so this patient was bitten by a rattlesnake. Now, rattlesnake bites are part of the Crotalini subfamily. That's the mm, British way of saying it. the UK. Yes, the, the British UK. way. How astute of you. The British way. You must, oh have, must have read up on Britannica before we uh, did this episode. I, I'm pretty sure the UK is like 10% of our listenership. Yeah, so we're giving credit congratulations. to them. You're welcome. Uh, there, somebody is like driving in London right now listening. Like, oh, yes. The they're sipping their tea with oh, their yes. pinky out and yeah, they're listening. Right. <laughs> While everyone else is like, isn't it just Crotalini? Crotalini? Anyway. anyway, so... <laughs> Yes, right. in the hills of Appalachia. So pit vipers, that's this group. And, hmm. and they, they can cause some significant toxin effects, obviously. Essentially, the big members of this family, at least in the U.S., are the following. Yeah. Rattlesnakes, several species of rattlesnakes in the United oh, yeah. States, Eastern Diamondback, the Western Diamondback, also known as the yep. Diamondback baseball team in Phoenix, Arizona, the hmm. timber rattlesnake, and the prairie rattlesnake. How pleasant. Hmm. Then you have copperheads. Copperheads are more on our side of the of the country here. They are oh, yeah. found the eastern and central U.S. Dr. Huzan and I have personally seen a copperhead uh, close, oh, yeah. close up. Yeah. And we will tell you that story later. And essentially, yeah. they're in from Texas to Florida to Massachusetts to Nebraska. They're everywhere. And then cottonmouths mm -hmm. are water moccasins. These are found in, you guessed it, watery yeah. areas, streams, ponds, oh, yeah. swamps in the southeastern United States. Hey, guess what the most venomous snake is? According to Britannica, again, we're using closed reference. Britannica, here. great. Thanks. Thanks for referencing them and not a peer review journal. Uh, so I, I don't know this. I, I don't know. So this. I, I learned this on my Survivor show last night that I was watching in preparation oh, for this podcast. Gosh. The Inland Taipan. Hopefully okay. no Australians dispute me on this. They live in right. rural Australia, very rural Australia. Okay. Of course. Why, where else? Yeah, course. One bite, mm -hmm. apparently, one bite from the snake is lethal enough to kill 100 adult humans. That's, that's like, terrifying. But apparently oh it's gosh. very recluse, very shy. It's one of those classic examples of it knows it's the boss, so it just doesn't have yeah. to show off. It can just go hide somewhere. Yeah, and just, just, yeah. the, unless somebody has, like, a video they're trying to yeah. make of it. And yeah. like, its nickname yeah. is called yeah. the Fierce Snake. Oh my gosh. It's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Hey, let's dive into initial assessment and stabilization. So ABCs, okay, yeah, obviously yep. we get that. The vast majority don't have to be intubated here. History and physical, obviously as, as detailed as possible without yeah. losing 
sight of the goal of examining the wound. So, so the problem is when you enter this yep. room, there's gonna be a lot of drama. There's gonna be a lot of oh, drama. Ninety yeah. percent of the time, it's gonna be a male. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they're going to be like hyperventilating, right? They're going to be inevitably like, they're like I could have killed it. I could have killed it if I had the chance. Anyway, yeah. it's always it, yeah. it, we're not joking around. The statistics show ninety percent of these patients are men, yeah, and almost yeah. I think over half the time alcohol is involved. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and I can I can recall too, like half of that, you know, half of the guys who come in, yeah, they're like intoxicated and like something. They're like, I was just minding my own business, <laughs> minding my business, yeah. exactly. So you got to yeah. get the time of occurrence as best as possible. That's important yeah. for discussing antivenom and observation description of the snake but don't spend too much time on this they're you're mm -hmm. not going to get good answers off this and then mm -hmm. of course any first aid measures what they do at the scene yeah. and your exam is going to be looking at the bite site looking for secondary signs of envenomation yeah. around that area you know swelling erythema pain ecchymosis if that's there already that's yeah. concerning and then your typical first aid measures well, why don't you get into that dr Hussain? Yeah. So here's the key tourniquet. thing. So take, yeah, ugh, stop it. No tourniquet. Okay. Uh, take that affected limb mm -hmm. and try to get it above the heart. I think that's important. Yep. You know, that's going to help slow uh, the spread of the venom. It's going to help with the edema as well. So start that right off the bat. Um, like if it was the lower leg, the patient's leg shouldn't be, um, you know, uh, the furthest away from them and, and below them, right? Just elevate that leg right off the bat while you're evaluating right. them. Um, and again, avoid harmful interventions. Those are do not apply a tourniquet, do not apply ice. Um, and yeah, like nobody should be allowing the patient to cut and suck the venom. All right. So. Exactly right. Don't do that. No sucking Just don't venom. do that. Hey, so, I, you know, it can get kind of confusing this whole like when to administer antivenom yeah. and not. Especially and if you talk to a toxicologist. <laughs> It, it, exactly. So number one, in real life, what you do in real life is you call poison control and you follow what your local poison control team wants to do, right? For or sure. your local toxicologist wants to do. You want to do this in conjunction with them, right? But there are some guidelines. So on the test, they're going to make it very obvious and we're going to get into that. So Briggs, get into like how they're going to make it obvious on the test and how yeah. they're going to make it obvious on the test that you can kind of wait and see. Yeah. One of the most obvious ones, and we get to this, by the way, in our rapid bombs. In our rapid bombs, we yeah. pretty much summarize this yeah. even um, simpler. So succinctly. check that out. Succinctly. Yeah. That's a good word. Succinctly. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, progressive local tissue effects. This is the most straightforward. Essentially, any significant progressive swelling like you entered the room you saw the patient and then i don't know less than 30 minutes later or less than an hour later you walk back in the room or at any point and you're like wow that's already now swollen up to the knee if it was at the ankle yeah. or something and you're you're yeah. noticing that it's several centimeters spread that is right. definitely an indication for antivenom another yeah. of course is and they're not gonna they're not gonna ask you like oh now it's increased by like one you know, centimeter two centimeters or something you know like you might be doing with your poison or a control. sonometer like if you're that. in england yeah they're, sonometer. They're, exactly they're just gonna say it's like getting a lot worse right i was so, hoping you uh, laughed at that joke so i'm not i'm just ignoring <laughs> your whole uk thing you've already given them too much credit all right, all right. so moving on it's all right so the second is going to be hematologic venom effects. And this is going to be any abnormal coagulation yeah. factors, obviously. You are getting coag yeah. factors on this, uh, right. on these patients. You are getting your PTI and RPTT. You're getting fiber right. engine levels. You're getting, yeah. of course, a CBC look at the platelet count. And so those are the right. big three, right? The, the signs of concerning for not DIC. It's a yeah. play on words. Yeah. It's VIC. Venom VIC. Coagulant. There you go. But yeah. yeah, so it, it, PT, PTI and R. Yeah. CBC, yep. check for platelets. And fibrinogen. And fibrinogen. Yep. It's one of those three right off the bat. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, systemic signs. These are going to be, I would say, the most rare, uh, but these yeah. are going to be your, oh, wow, they're now hypotension, they're in distributive shock. Uh, they have, yeah. they could have a neurotoxicity because there are certain types of snakes that can cause neurotoxins. Yeah. They could have angioedema, which would be oh, yeah. extremely unfortunate. Uh, and then, of course, just severe nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. There are certain types of uh venoms like uh, certain types of copperheads can actually cause like angioedema yeah. the western taipan a relative of the inland taipan which is in um mm. australia mm. that has a venom called typoxin <laughs> which is a mix of neurotoxin procoagulant and myotoxin that paralyze muscles inhibit breathing and cause hemorrhaging of course in, uh, of course this is to the uh you know references of britannica <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. This is, her, ma this her, is Majesty, her Majesty's Journal. Just, we're moving on. Just stop it. Okay. 
So we talked about like when you're going to be giving, yes. you know, anti venom, yes. right? Um, so can you talk about, you know, when maybe you're not going to be giving anti venom? Yes. Yeah. So when you're not going to be giving it would be localized symptoms like we talked about. So yeah. just pain at the bite site hasn't significantly swollen at all. Without progression. Of course, without progression. So what are the indications of dosing here? Now this can vary, but there's a standard dose. There's a standard dose mm -hmm. and it's going to be about four to six vials, really just four vials of Crofab. Yeah. Crofab is the specific antivenom for uh, the rattlesnakes we were talking about. That's the typical one. And just one. in general, yeah, just right? In general. That's the, yeah, just in that's general. the one for pit vipers. Pit vipers, yeah, sure. The, yeah. That's what I meant by rattlesnakes, family. sorry. But yeah, pit vipers. Yeah. And severe cases, you can increase that dose. That's fine. You're not going to be tested on that. And then, of course, following up, you're, you're really just doing serial exams, frequent reassessment. Yeah. You could be redrawing labs uh, several hours later if you're concerned about them. And that's essentially what you're doing with these patients. Now, the goal of the antivenom, of course, is to neutralize the circulating venom. And it's interesting because the dosage of the antivenom is based on the severity of the envenomation. So it's not based mm -hmm. on the weight. So that's why kids can get the same dose as adults, uh, which nope. is four to six vials. It would be the same. Uh, it's not based on the weight. For some reason, they might ask you that Yeah, that's question. a weird question. And, yeah, it's a weird question they might ask yeah. you. Um, and understanding that, mm -hmm. I think, is, a, is an important thing. The kids can be dosed like the same amount. Mm -hmm. uh, just it's again, it's based on the venom. They're not going to ask you the specific dosing, but they're they will want you to know that the kid dosing can be yeah. similar to adult. And of course, huge concern for allergic reactions, like any of these antivenoms, oh, yeah. right? Just like the oh, yeah. the botulinum toxin antivenom that can cause some significant oh, allergic yeah. reactions. Same mm -hmm. with this one, serum sickness. So monitor them very closely for we're not joking here this isn't like the i have an IV contrast allergy oh i'm sure you do no. this is yeah <laughs> this is actually like okay right. this is a legitimate I concern for yeah I i'm yeah. allergic to salt um oh. <laughs> this is yeah. a legitimate allergy that you have to keep an eye out for yeah. and be ready uh, to intervene especially for angioedema yeah. now pain management uh, what do we got here yeah so look you're gonna be providing pain control yeah Here's this is painful thing they might they might want you to know this as well. Yep. NSAIDs are to be avoided. Mm -hmm. All right, just avoid NSAIDs because of their potential effect on bleeding. Um, you are, you know, obviously giving them opioid therapy. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be in a lot of pain. Uh, when it comes to kind of wound care, you're cleaning the bite side. You're looking for signs of Soap infection. Water. Um, obviously, give them exactly. Give them tetanus. Just give them tetanus. Vaccination, and not actual tetanus. <laughs> Correct. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, That's what I'm here th for. Thank you for clarifying nice. uh, what I assume ninety nine point nine percent of our listeners already yes. knew. Uh, monitoring and following up. So, like we talked about, you're going to be monitoring the patient's vital signs. Yeah. Um, you're going to be looking at their coag profile. Like we talked about, uh, and then repeat doses of anti-venom you know might be required you're doing serial exams throughout this by the way right so um the observation period here it's going to be 18 to 24 hours so it's really important you might be presenting this patient and then they present a case where the patient is having like local swelling they're not having progression of swelling that's not one that you're necessarily just like sending home right away right um you're going to be observing them uh, for a period of time, especially when that swelling is present to make sure things aren't getting worse. Yes. Um, so when it comes to discharge, um, you're really making sure the symptoms haven't progressed, the lab results are stable, patient's pain is under control. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a couple of key things, um, and they'll want you to know this, is when it comes to compartment synd syndrome, super rare. And fasciotomy is almost always going to be the wrong answer yes, on the test absolutely instead the correct answer is going to be give more anti-venom um so is some of these wounds and extremities will look terrible um but again fasciotomy is almost never needed and you instead need to be more aggressive with anti-venom um, that's a, it's an important thing that a lot of toxicologists uh, will tell you as well. If you really want to see a toxicologist go off, just talk to them about, uh, you know, is this going to require fashion and they will, yeah. uh, give you a whole, yeah. uh, spiel and, on and that. For our listeners that are probably wondering, why don't we just give antivenom to every one of these patients? Mm. 
uh, the number one, well, obviously one is the side effects of the antivenom, which are significant actually, yeah. can be significant. Yeah. The other reason, of course, is the cost. Um, we, yep. this is a very expensive Oof. medication. Yeah. I can't quote the exact cost cause I, I don't want to yeah. lie on numbers, but it's in the thousands. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, and, and and it expires. And it expires. So guess what happens? They just toss it out. Throw it away. Know, Give when, it to them. <laughs> when it expires. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so keep that in mind. This is one of those things. Yeah. It's kind of like the rabies vaccination. It's not just like, why don't we just give it to anyone? And it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's because of cost. Uh, and yeah. that is an important thing to consider. I know we don't yeah, like to talk, and, I know we don't talk about it, but it's just true. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah and I, I think it's yes, in combo. That it's that. And yeah, as you yeah. mentioned, the whole so anaphylaxis yeah, okay. part of it. Right? All right. Hey, we got to cover Reddit. Uh, yeah, but we got to do a quick short as well. Um, okay, go ahead. So you do it. Let's, uh, I'm going to cue you up. This is all you, Briggs, looking at the camera. I'm going to yeah. ask you the questions. Are you ready? ready. Let's do I'm it. Looking we got to straight on. Alexander says we don't look into the camera. I'm looking enough, at the camera right now. I just think it's like, I think it's like really awkward it to is. do that. I'm looking okay? straight ahead. All right. Pit Vipers. What are the main snakes to know about? Crotalinae. Okay, yeah. which ones? Let's go. So in the United States, the rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, copperheads. Those are the big three. Nice. What are the key labs you need to be getting? Key labs are going to be anything coagulation related. So PT, PTT, INR, the fibrinogen, and then of course your CBC, mm -hmm. which has a platelet level. And when you see changes in that, is that indication to give antivenom? Yes. What are some of the hard indications to give antivenom they'll present on a test? Besides that, besides the coagulation changes. Besides that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, rapidly progressing wound uh, in, terms, in terms of swelling, uh, distal from the wound site, and of course, any systemic symptoms. So vital sound abnormalities, like tachycardia, blood pressure changes, difficulty breathing. Pain out of proportion. Yeah, pain out of proportion, yes. all that. They're going to make it very obvious. Very obvious. And when it comes to dosing, adults and pediatrics? Four to six vials of Curhat. And it's the same, same, correct? Not based on weight. It's not based on weight. Based on severity. Right? So that's really important. Mm -hmm. And you're observing for these, these people for how long? Like 18 to 24 hours or so. That's how long you're watching them. Long time. Awesome. That's it. We pretty much told you everything that's you it. need to know. You know. Hey, let's go to Reddit. Boom. Then we got to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I got Reddit this one corner. page here. Yeah, Reddit corner. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Reddit. I got this one here. The do's and don'ts of snake bites. All right, let's do it. Let's go. And the uh, poster's name was... Miss America, one, two, three. The post is talking actually about pretty legitimate information about do's and don'ts of snake bites. It's saying oh, nice. don't try to capture the snake. Don't uh, cut the wound and try to suck out the venom. Don't okay. use a tourniquet. And one, okay. one point here was, ready for this? Don't drink yeah. any caffeine or alcohol. <laughs> no. The first post says, clean the wound, but not with water. Response to that comment said, okay, so what should I clean it with? Would be helpful to okay. know since water is probably the only thing people are carrying in the woods or in the fields when they get bitten <laughs> by snakes. <laughs> the next post in response to that, the sub comment was, uh, yeah. with the blood of the snake that bit you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then a response to that comment was, besides urine, I've got no other liquid on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's all we got. That's all we got for Reddit Quarter. I love it. Those are some good ones with the blood of the snake, of course. <laughs> Reddit always providing primetime material. All right, I gotta go hey, shift. <laughs> hey, can I tell you? Can we tell, tell a, a quick story, story about you got, the you snake? You got one least? minute. One minute. Yeah. So we were uh, on one of our camping trips and we had just fjorded a, a river oh, good on word. our trip. And we're sitting there and just casually, like, just having fun on the rocks. And then I go to fill up water. It's like me, you, and Joseph. You remember this? And then I go down with like the water uh, to filter it. And then all of a sudden, I like jerk backwards as if like I've been just like hit. And you guys are like, what just happened? I'm like, we need to move now. And we look and there's like a water moccasin that was just yeah. like hanging out, like just staring at just us. Just chilling, just having his best bathing. day. In the same water that we were just swimming. swimming. <laughs> he literally was, no joke, at the spot we were wading into the water, putting our hands yeah. on that rock several times and then getting right. out. Yeah, he was just like <sighs> right below that. And I, and I was just casually like filling up like my water. Meanwhile the, sna meanwhile, the snake was like, I could end your life if I wanted to. <laughs> right. I could make this trip for em board bombs very unforgettable <laughs> so, now that would have been legendary yes. yeah but in the in the in the most uh bad way hey, hey this is a long episode this is a lot of fun 
This is a fun topic. We have to catch up, man. A lot of fun topic here. I know. We'll do, and so we'll do the other uh, snake and animation, and I'll save the other story I had for next time. Ooh, I can't wait. I have a good story to tell you. Yes. Uh, Hint, hint. Um, I found where we're going to be going later this year. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, it is we have going a big to trip be a planned, surprise. And we have a big huge trip, trip planned. And, the uh, annual have, board bombs retreat. I, I have the itinerary kind of mapped out. It oh, wow. A surprise to you. All yeah. Right. Great. Good All deal. Right. Hey, Bryce. Good to see you, man. See you, buddy.